Let's have some fun adding a vintage letter to our journals. Welcome to another Junk Journal Snacks episode, your bite-sized inspiration for working in your journals. It's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So I have typed a letter in Word on my computer and I used a font called Edwardian Script. But before I read you what I wrote here, I would like to tell you a little bit of the history of where I moved to since September of last year. So I live in Vienna, Austria, and the district I'm living in now is in German called Obersankt Veit, which would mean translated Upper Saint Vitus, which was first officially mentioned in 1015 and was located far outside the protective walls of Vienna. It was completely defenseless against all the armies charging against the capital, Vienna. Of course, there were plagues and natural disasters. And so this place was repeatedly reduced to rubble. Its population decimated and it, and it was set back in its development. But since it was close to Vienna and from the summer residence of the Habsburgs in Schönbrunn, the beautiful location of the place, the nearby Vienna River and the prominent rule over the centuries favored the repeated reconstruction, thankfully. So in the 19th century, the castle at Upper Sankt Vitus was used as a summer residence of the archbishops. So agricultural and handicraft businesses settled near the castle. So that's why I moved here, obviously. <laughs> Initially, viticulture, which is wine growing, was the focus of this area, which became more and more difficult to do to regular dry periods and infestations. So in the end, dairy farming actually prevailed. So since then, Upper St. Vitus has become a summer resort near Vienna, preferred by the nobility and rich citizens until the construction of villas that are inhabited all year round. And in 1892, Upper St. Vitus was incorporated into Vienna as part of the 13th district. And just for context, Vienna currently has 23 districts. So I wrote a letter which came from my friend Mary in Vienna on May 28th, 1856. And by the way, back then it was custom even in the US to write the day before the month, not like you have it now, month before day. So Mary wrote, Dear Barbara, I hope this letter finds you well. It has recently come to my attention at an invitation to tea by Lady Elizabeth last week that you have moved away to Upper Sankt Vitus. I truly admire your adventurous spirit. I'm sure you're enjoying the vast greenery and the occasional glass of delicious wine. Of course, I want to come visit you as soon as possible once I can convince dear Johan to let me have the carriage for a few days. I just have to find the right moment when he's in a good mood. <laughs> I wish you every success in your journal business. I couldn't be prouder. Sending you all my love. And I just need to sign it. Obviously, I should be using a quill or a calligraphy pen, but I'm just going to use my fountain pen. <laughs> So her name was Maria. And of course, I did some research on how letters were folded back then. And the cool thing is that they didn't need envelopes. So there's many different ways they used to fold the letters. There's not just one correct way. So I chose one particular method and it's really not very difficult. So I'm going to fold in the long edges approximately, let's say, an inch. I'm going to use my vintage iron for the crease. You can just use a bone folder. So I'm doing that on both sides. And then a lot of times when people didn't have enough space here for writing, they would continue to actually write here. You can see that a lot with old letters. And then we need to fold the bottom up. And before I crease it here, I'm just checking. Yeah, that should work. So I'm folding this down, making a nice crease. And then I'm going to fold it up one more time. 
so that I have something between one and I would say two inches left here on the top. And also with some old letters, you would also see some writing here, wherever they could find any additional space to write. And then we just fold down this upper flap as well. Now you could just seal your letter like this, but I think it's more authentic when you stick this edge into these two flaps here. You just kind of have to wiggle it around until it works. <laughs> And when you have the edge sticking out like this, you can just try to tuck that in a little bit more. Doesn't always work, but keep in mind that obviously the letter folding back then was nowhere near perfect either. And before I add a seal, I'm going to write the address here. So I'm going to try to do this in fancy script, although I'm not practiced in that at all. So a lot of times you would have a two up here and I'm basing this letter now on actually US letters because that was easier to find to research. So you would have the two up here. And then you'd have the name and the address here. I don't need to write Austria because this is coming from Vienna in Austria. Oops, I wrote Upper Sanktified. That is wrong. That's a mixture between the German and the English version. So in German, it would say Ober Sanktified and in English, it would be Upper Sankt Vitus. So this is the mixture. That's actually totally okay because I am such a mixture of both languages. So it just fits perfectly. So a lot of times they would have instructions here. And interestingly, those would be written with red chalk. Now I don't have red chalk, but I have this red colored pencil. And I'm going to say, just to help the carriage out to find the place, near Schönbrunn. And I know this looks weird, but if you look at old letters, especially from North America, you will see that a lot of times they had writing like this on it. So now on the back, the first thing I'm going to add is a seal. Obviously, the most authentic way to add a seal would be to use some red wax and to melt that and to then use your seal stamp. But... I want to divert from that a little bit. So instead of the wax, I want to use my glue gun. And since I don't want to just have like an empty see-through seal, I want to add some petals underneath. So I'm going to add this pressed buttercup. I don't even think you need to have a pressed flower. I think you can do this with a fresh flower as well. Just going to shorten the stem like that. And then I'll just take my glue gun. Please be very, very careful with this. And I'm going to add glue. Oops, this is moving. I'm going to be very, very generous in adding glue on top. And then I'm going to stamp my seal. I'm using one that says love because Maria is sending all her love and I can just let that sit there and I will let that cool off for a few minutes. But if you're too worried about putting it directly on your precious letter, you can also make it separately. So let's move this. I'm going to use this coaster like thing. I'm going to take one of my pressed flowers and break off the tip here. And then add my glue on top. And then I'll use my B stamp and press that in. We could also try this with some dried hydrangea petals. And I'll use this butterfly stamp. 
It's been a couple of minutes, so let's check our results. Let's check this one first. Oh my goodness, it doesn't come off. <laughs> ah, there. I've never used this before for the hot glue, so hopefully I can get this off with a letter opener. Oh my goodness, this was not a good idea. <laughs> I know it works with the wax. Okay, don't do this with the hot glue. I did it before on baking paper and that worked really well. So here's the example <laughs> using baking paper. Okay, let's get this one off. Oops. Let's try a Stanley knife. Okay, I ruined it a bit, but here it is. <laughs> Please don't do that. Do it on wax paper or baking paper. I can still definitely use it, but I still have some glue left over here. So that's not the way to do it. So I will do this off camera at another point. Please be very careful when using a Stanley knife. So just, just don't do this at all, okay? So hopefully we have more luck with this one. <laughs> oh yeah, this is cute. Oh, I really love it. And if you wanted to, you could of course add some gold wax. But in this case, I don't even want to do that. I think it's super cute as it is. Let me show you some more examples. So this is one where I used the gold wax on the butterfly. That's cute as well. And here's another one of the hydrangea petals. Another one of the buttercups. Oh, and this one is a daisy. So those come out super cute. But I must say I love this one the most. So that's awesome. So then you would sometimes see a stamp here of the city it came from. So in this case, that would be Vienna. And I'm using my clickable alphabet stamps and I'm writing it in German. So, so Vienna in German is Wien, simply because I don't have two N's. And to stamp Vienna and to try to stamp the N-A separately never works that well. So I'm just going to stick to the German word Wien. there and then up here sometimes you would see at least in north america one of the videos i watched was specifically dealing with letters from north carolina and those letters had so-called bishop's marks i will insert a photo of it here so you see it has like a circle stamp and then it has two letters and a number. So that would be the stamp that the letter would have been received. So in our case, it would be MA for May. And since this letter was mailed on May 28th, let's say it took a day to get to Upper St. Vitus. So that would be May 29th. So of course, I don't have a round stamp like that, but I did find a stamp that I could use, which is this one here. I don't want these two lines here because otherwise I can't stamp my month and day in here. So instead, I'm going to block those two lines. So I have my punch here and a scrap piece of paper. So I'll punch that out. And by coincidence, this here fits perfectly to cover the inside. So now I just have the outside border. So I'll ink that up. Now I can remove my paper and just stamp the circle up here. Oh, that did not stamp very well. That's okay. It wouldn't have always stamped perfectly then either. And then I'm going to take my 12 digit alphabet stamp. I'm going to stamp 29 on the bottom. And then I need MA on top of that whoops oh no i must have inked this part as well i did not pay attention i have lips here now since i really don't want the lips here <laughs> i'm going to add a postage stamp which i don't think they would have had at the time but since this isn't authentic anyway we might as well add a stamp why not it's our journal we do what makes us happy right so it definitely needs to be a stamp from Vienna and I don't want it looking too modern. So I've seen one here 
So I organize my stamps mostly by color. Some of them are organized by themes, but colors are super helpful. So there's this one, which obviously would have been from much later. So we'll keep that in mind. And then I found another one, which seems to be a lot older, which is this blue one right here. Actually, I would have loved to add like one with flowers. So I have these flower themed ones, but I couldn't find any from Austria, unfortunately. I have Germany, but not Austria. Also, these would have been great, like a butterfly or something, or a dragonfly would have been perfect. But I really need to go with an Austrian one. Anyway, so let's try one of those two. This one would, I think, work better, but it's too big. I mean, I could put it right there. I would cover half that stamp. Maybe I could stamp the circle over it again. I could definitely try that. Or here's the other one. No, it just looks too modern for me. I guess this would have been like, what, 40s, 50s, something like that. Okay, so let's do this one and try to restamp that circle on top. So I'm adding my paper circle on top again, adding the ink. Whoops, let's just rub the ink off in the middle, just in case I had any there. There, that's not so bad. The A is kind of lost and I don't think I can manage to restamp that. I'll just leave it. And another thing you can see on these letters from, Carol from North Carolina is they had the letters I, H, 4, and then they had 7, and a line here. I have no idea what these mean, but I like the way they look. <laughs> Obviously, you can also print a letter on coffee dyed paper. I used a fancy off-white paper. I didn't want to use the standard copy paper, but of course you could. So let's add this to our journal. So in my case, I'm adding it to my planner. How about in this pocket right here? Oh, that fits perfectly. Either like this or maybe like... Oh, that's even better because the blue works perfectly with this frame here from the Tim Holtz fabric. Maybe it can even stay like this so I can see my beautiful wax seal. If you don't have flower petals, either dried or fresh, you can obviously also just add any image underneath. Lots of possibilities here. Maybe you want to do some research of your own of how vintage letters used to be folded or what kind of marks they had on them. Maybe you want to research about where you live. I think all these facts are fascinating. No matter what you decide to do, I hope you had fun and hope to see you back here next Sunday. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.